Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to today's webinar. Uh, yeah, for everybody joining us, we will get started kind of right away. I know that some people might be opening up their email right now and, and clicking on the invite and uh, downloading the GoToWebinar interface and, and joining us. But uh, yeah, my name is uh, Carl Bergenham, and I'm the product manager for the Kenda UI product line. And I am joined by my lovely co-host, Alyssa. And Alyssa, I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Hi, I am the Angular Developer Advocate for Kendo UI, and I'm so happy to be here. This is going to be a really, I think, unique format for our webinar should kind of proceed as normal, but we have so many extra goodies afterwards. So just excited for today. Yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. All right, so we do have a pretty packed uh, webinar today, actually. We are covering a lot of stuff both on the jQuery side and on the Angular side. So I'm going to go ahead and get things started. So you should see this first initial lovely transition. Uh, and the first thing that I want to cover is that uh, everything that we covered today is available on our What's New pages that we have over on uh, the main Kendo UI website. So if you go to kendoui.com or telerik.com, hit the What's New uh, menu navigation there, you'll be able to see any and all updates that we covered today, just in case you want to see the components uh, and go to the links there, et cetera. So uh, everything will be covered there as well. And one of the first questions that always gets brought up in the uh, question box, and I should also mention that if you do have any questions, uh, you can feel free to type those in over on the right-hand side or whatever you left to go to webinar interface. You should see a little chat box you can type into. So we have a full crew of folks that are ready and waiting to assist you with any and all questions that you might have while Alyssa and I go through and cover the content. So if you have a very in-depth question about a new feature, a new component, or anything else about Kenda UI in general, we have a whole slew of folks that are waiting to help you and assist with any and all questions. Uh, so if your first question happens to be, will this session be recorded? I can give you the answer right now. That is a solid yes. So you'll be able to find this webinar hosted on our YouTube channel, which you'll be able to find at this URL. So just youtube.com slash Kendo UI TV. And that makes me feel like a TV host sitting here now uh, with all the lights on <laughs> and everything. Uh, also, uh, while we're, uh, we'll be paying attention to questions over on the right-hand side in the uh, GoToWebinar interface, if you prefer to, you can also ask us questions on Twitter using the hashtag Kendo UI hashtag. So if uh, you see me looking down or off to the screen at all, it is because I'm going to pay, be paying attention to that uh, Twitter stream when I'm not presenting. So uh, that's uh, kind of a way for us to be able to also interact with you on Twitter. So if you prefer Twitter, feel free to ask us questions there as well, and we'll try to answer. And of course, if we don't answer you during the webinar, we'll try to follow up as quickly as we can afterwards to make sure that your questions are answered. Now, in general, for R3 2020 for Kendo UI, we have a lot of things that have happened. Uh, now, today we're just going to be covering on uh, covering the Angular and the jQuery portion, and we're going to start with jQuery. However, for everybody else that's just interested in what happened with our React components and our Vue components, I just wanted to throw that up on the screen. But the main focus that we're looking at today is going to be the Angular components and the jQuery components. And you can see a ton of new components. I mean, look at that stack of new components with just that new tag next to them on the Angular side. And it, it also, of course, enhanced across uh, all the various components that we already have that are pre-existing within the library. So a ton of fun stuff to cover. And now I'm going to go ahead and jump straight into the Kendo UI for jQuery piece. As I mentioned, we do have a lot to cover. So uh, what I'll start doing is going through and just a quick image and kind of a highlight of all the new features and components. And then I'll also jump into a demo portion where I'll show that off in our live demos. So the first component that is new is our wizard component. So the wizard component, unfortunately, isn't a man with a hat that does magic, but it's the next <laughs> best thing. It is a stepper component that allows you to tie it in a little bit more closely to a form, and it allows you to, as a developer, set up kind of a guided way to fill out this form. So this screenshot kind of gives uh, a sample of what this could look like, right? Let's say you are creating a, a shopping cart and the end of the checkout process, you want to be able to have you know, some initial account details so that you can, the uh, person can sign in or create a new account, maybe you know, some shipping information, and then the last step, 
you have the payment information. So just a nice way to tie in uh, essentially the Kendo UI for jQuery stepper and the form component all into one component that it gives this nice and guided step. Now you have configuration options like, for example, uh, validating all the steps right at the end. You can validate uh, all the steps as they occur. So a user can't leave a step until uh, they have uh, properly filled out all the information. And it kind of depends on the workflow that you want to work with, but a super useful component for sure. And now the next component is, is pretty exciting. It's the image editor component. So this component is essentially designed for users to be able to upload their images and be able to do some manipulation with those images. So initially we have some options, like for example, just zooming around for if they just want to get a feel for what's happening in the image. Uh, but you can do things like uh, resize and crop are probably going to be some of the more useful features coming out of the, the component. And along with that, any changes that the user does to the image, you can undo or redo. So we have kind of a stack that allows you to go through the changes that you've done. And then once they're happy with the new image, let's say they wanted to just cover the tulips, right? And they wanted to crop everything else out in the background, they can go ahead and save the image and download it to their local file system uh, to be able to use that new image. We also have a new loader component, which hopefully the animation that you see here comes through well for everybody through the webinar interface. But essentially the loader component is a loading indicator uh, that uh, actually has a lot of different configuration options. So we just happen to see one kind of infinite spinner like uh, setup that we have here with three dots spinning around. But there's a lot of other types that come out of the box and you can also customize uh, some of these animations to be able to make sure that they truly fit into what you want these animations to look like. So a loader component, extremely useful to have in any scenario where you're loading additional data asynchronously in your application or you're waiting for a part of your application to finish loading or it might be a process, whatever it might be, just makes your application pop a little bit and of course continues to have some sort of um, responsiveness in the application, even though you might be waiting for a process to load. The next component that we'll be talking about is the app art component, which is uh, a great component if you're somebody like me that I, I don't know how many times I've created a header uh, in my days creating sample applications, but the app bar allows you to create what we see in a lot of modern day applications, right? This nice little he header bar, which actually uh, you can even apply to the footer if you like to have your application. And it comes with a lot of flexibility, actually. You can do some pretty interesting stuff, like, for example, work with a template in order to be able to insert uh, custom components or any type of component, like, for example, the search bar that we see here in this image. Um, you have the ability to do action items. So you see over on the right hand side how we have some icons that we can work with, like a account uh, icon, for example, a notification icon, whatever it might be. And you can also, as we see on the left-hand side, do something like integrate with the drawer component, for example, to expand and collapse a uh, navigation over on the left-hand side. So- you know, Carl, we are so spoiled. Like we're I just know. so spoiled. Do you yeah. remember the days? Yeah. Were you there when you had to position things and that's all you had in the web? Yeah. And to create a header or a footer was a nightmare. And now we get this luxury. Like I just, I just had to say how spoiled we are. Yeah, I know. You just <laughs> add it to the application, you're off to the races. Yeah. Uh, when I first started <laughs> doing web development, I found the perfect layout that I created with all the different iframes that I could. And I just saved that as a template. And that was the start of everything I did. Iframe at the top, iframe on the left hand side, iframe from the footer. <laughs> Felt great. Uh, so now we yeah, no longer have to do that. Solution. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very spoiled, very spoiled for sure. Uh, now, uh, another component that we released uh, is the text area component. So uh, what we essentially did here is we took the existing HTML text area component. We know that that is a standard HTML element, and we built on top of that to cre create additional functionality that we find is useful with the text area component, and then integrated it with, of course, other components uh, from the Kendo UI suite. So. It, not only is this uh, something that allows you to now have a text area that is properly styled with the Kendo UI themes, which you could do before with some CSS primitives that we offer, but now we're also adding additional functionality on top of that to really make sure that the text area fits naturally into the rest of uh, your application. Uh, some folks might also be familiar with this called a multi-line text box, especially if you're coming from the material design world. 
uh, that that tends to be something that uh, that gets brought up quite a lot as well. So it's all kind of the same text area, multi-line text box. Now, in terms of improvements that we've done to components, uh, we have a lot happening in the Gantt. So first of all, uh, we now have a column template. So for those of you that are familiar with the Gantt, you kind of have this tree list like structure over on the left hand side that has a set of columns. And now within those columns, you can define templates just like you can within the tree list or the kind of UI grid. So in this particular case, it's a team lead column that has an avatar and a name. Uh, so that is just a template provided for that particular column. And you can do that I on a column I was watching column yesterday when this was introduced for React, right? Yes. Of the Gantt chart. And I'm, I really, I've honestly never in my life heard of it. So is it just a chart with random connections i don't i was still really confused by that it seems like there's a lot of features so i don't yeah the gantt card uh, gantt <laughs> chart there we go is a uh, very uh initially it looks kind of simple right it's a tree list and then some some tasks for example but it's a a super useful thing to work with when it comes to project management so everything you see on the right hand side and we'll see that in the demos as well are tasks and they might be related to something so for example for one of our releases uh, we could lay out all the components and all the features that we want to create and then how they're connected. Maybe we need to do uh, some design tasks before we're able to do engineering tasks, right? And you can actually see that kind of laid out in the timeline on the right-hand side. And then, uh, you know, from a pure data perspective, you can see what the data looks like in the tree list. So super useful tool uh, in uh, project management. In fact, there are solutions out there that are just Gantt charts that have function, uh, you know, a lot of functionality on top of it. So it's a super powerful component to be able to pull into your to your project and work with data, and not have data exist somewhere in another application that you don't have a, access to a database for or something like that. So, uh, and you know, the features that we've added with this release just continue to extend upon that powerful uh, component. Uh, speaking of more things you can do here and planning tasks, we now have uh, this interface that we call plan versus actual. And what this allows you to do is you can switch between with just a toggle switch, uh, the actual uh, current view of how tasks have been performed versus uh, their original estimated time. So in this particular case, we can see that uh, the prototype uh, task is green and we're actually ahead of time while architecture we haven't quite started yet and that means that we'll most likely be delayed based on where we are in the current uh, current kind of lineup so this just gives users the ability to see what they originally actually uh, what they originally plan and how things are actually turning out and have some built-in ways to be able to style and uh, see just how well or how poorly or how medium you're doing in terms <laughs> of your project I like doing medium. Medium. <laughs> medium. Uh, and then another item that we added in with this release is a column menu. So in this particular case, we just see a sorted uh, Gantt uh, chart, but the column menu are those three dots that you see on the last column there that pops open and allows you to do additional interactivity on the particular column of choice. And that also, of course, from a developer perspective, allows you to customize that menu and kind of, kind of tweak it if you like to in terms of what options are available. Uh, now, jumping into the grid, one of our most favorite components, right? Uh, one thing that we added <laughs> in this particular release, and uh, the, without a GIF, this might not necessarily uh, be showcased that well, but uh, we introduced sticky columns. And a sticky column is a column that as it starts as a normal column, and as you scroll past it, it sticks to uh, uh, the, mm. uh, you know, wherever your frozen columns mm. might be, right? So you can actually start That's with so some frozen useful. columns and then do these kind of sticky columns. And then what's neat is that once you scroll back into its original position, it actually detaches. So it's not permanently locked, it's sticky. So uh, we added that into the uh, grid to kind of add on to what we're already doing with frozen columns. And then this is something that I can show off in a demo because in a, uh, outside of showing code, because honestly in a demo, it just looks like a normal grid. But we also added in the ability to do foreign key binding. So uh, what that looks like, if you can see in the category ID field here specifically, we're actually doing an additional call in order to be able to pull in more information specifically for that column and then bind to a particular data text field there in a, in a value field. So this you can do on a column by column basis. So for any column where, 
you don't have that data originally in your first data source, you can now define a second data source just for that column in order to be able to pull in additional data, uh, which can be quite useful if you have uh, some more complex uh, database setups and you can't just pull everything in and flatten the data and then add it to the data source. On the tree list side, uh, we improve the drag and drop functionality and we'll be able to see that in the demos. So that, that will be a little bit uh, easier to see there, but we essentially took what we already have in the drag and drop area of the tree list and we just made it more like the tree view. And that was some of the feedback that uh, we had that uh, yes, the drag and drop works, but we just need it to be a little bit better. Uh, so we improve things there. Uh, so now we can very easily reorganize uh, the items within the tree list. You now have this nice indicator that allows you to get an idea of where you're dropping a particular node and its children and everything like that. We also added built-in checkbox selection. So previously, this is something that you could achieve uh, using a column template and some additional logic, but now we have that out of the box. So selection has always been a part of the tree list for, for a long time, but now you can do that with checkboxes. So you have a couple different options for how to deal with selection. And last but not least, something that we will highlight when we jump over to the demos is that we've also uh, kind of given a facelift to the demo, facelift to the demos, and also we tweaked the uh, all the goodies underneath under the hood. So. The docs and demos for Kendo UI for jQuery are a lot faster uh, to load. So you'll be able to see that as we navigate through the, the docs here that uh, it's quite snappy. And we've improved a lot of things under the hood to make sure that the demos are as fast as they possibly can be. And in some cases, we've actually seen an increase of like 400% in terms of performance. So they, they're that much faster. And that's a big number, right? 4X is, is quite, quite significant. So that uh, really, adds up over time, right, as you're navigating through the demos and maybe using them in your day to day. So hopefully we not only save you some development time, but also save you some time when using our resources. Speaking of, uh, let's jump over and catch some of these components in action. So I just said a quick time check and we are good on time. Now, first, uh, what you'll see when I jump over to these demos, if you haven't taken a look at this over the last week or so, uh, we do have a new and updated look of the demo. So now, whenever you navigate actually to any of the Kendo UI product lines, jQuery, Angular, React, or Vue, you'll see a common interface uh, for all demos. And we have some of the top available uh, or most popular components here at the top. Uh, some sample applications that you can actually cycle through if you like to, so we have uh, about five or so that you can you can navigate through right now. If we scroll down here, you'll be able to see this is a full list of all the components, just like we normally have, right? Uh, but just uh, a little bit uh, more up to date uh, in terms of a look and feel. And we have, of course, the new lovely Kendoka down here at the bottom as well. Uh, now, if we just uh, start taking a look at some of our components to see the uh, the demos in action, you'll see that the demos themselves actually have also been updated in terms of their uh, look and feel. So we traditionally had the demo running at, up top and then the section below with the source code. But now you can click on this tab to be able to see the source code, easily jump over to the API reference. Uh, you can also edit uh, the component, for example, in this particular case in the um, in, in the overview that we have here, we can edit it in the uh, dojo or in the theme builder. So the dojo is where we can modify the source code and play around with it. And then the theme builder is where if you want to take any one of our existing themes and of course uh, modify it just slightly and download that new theme without necessarily writing all your own SAS and CSS, you can do that in there. Anyways, with the stepper, uh, you can see here that I can fill out the username, email, password, hit next. Uh, I can try to hit next here, and I believe I'm going to get a, some validation happening. So there we see now that I did absolutely nothing uh, with any of these fields, uh, and all the fields are required except this uh, optional field right here. It will immediately uh, throw a validation error, so I can continue to go through here, right, and fill out my name, uh, country, gender, whatever it might be, right? I have an easy time to fill this out and go all the way until the end. Uh, so the wizard, as I mentioned, right, can uh, can work kind of as a standalone component, or you can do some integration with the form component, and um, you can even load the content, uh, content asynchronously, so you don't have to necessarily have everything predefined if you have some really large forms. Uh, the wizard, to me, is great to take really large forms and narrow them down a little bit, so it's it's a little bit more, I guess, consumable by the end user, uh, and uh, so hopefully you're not loading too many uh, items on each uh, step of, of uh, these forms. Where of course, we just have three here, but you can have as many steps as you like to. 
All right, I'm going to be closing these demos as we go along. So the next uh, demo that we have here uh, is the image uh, editor. And by the way, since uh, since we're just dealing with the image editor as is, we can see here that right now uh, code for this is very simple, right? We just call dot kendo image editor, and then to set a width and height, and then we have a little uh, save as feature here to be able to just immediately save uh, the file Do you using like command it. plus. Just like we're gonna oh, yeah, help with this a little bit. Thanks. I'm kind of blind, yeah. so. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I think yeah, I think it makes it easier for everybody. Uh, but yeah. Uh, here we see uh, si simple to, to get up and running. And in this particular case, we just started with a predefined URL, uh, URL for the image, but you can leave this blank and just have somebody upload an image themselves if, if you'd like to, of course. Um, so uh, if I go through here and start just playing around a little bit with cropping, I can uh, I can either do that manually or I can uh, potentially set up uh, you know some uh, some height and width here using the uh, numerical values. And as soon as I uh, lose focus of one of those elements, we'll see here that the crop changes. Um, I can keep things to the original ratio, or I can modify the ratio if I wanted to. I can lock or unlock the aspect ratio. So normal things with cropping, right? But if I go ahead and hit confirm, we'll see here that uh, we get a new nice and cropped image. And then if I go ahead and click download, we'll see here at the bottom right-hand corner that it just downloads uh, with the with the name that we set as the configuration option. So uh, if you want to have a default name, if you don't want, it's completely up to you. But this component is fairly standalone, so there's not too much else to, to kind of cover right now. Of course, there are other options that we can play around with, but uh, definitely, uh, you see, I can even go back to the original image by clicking back here. Uh, for those of you that are looking to add image manipulation into your applications, super nice and easy component to drop in and start working with. All right, next is the app bar. So uh, the app bar, as we kind of uh, mentioned, right, has the ability for you to have a built-in drawer icon. Right now in this particular demo, it doesn't integrate with the drawer component, but you can easily do that. And then you can also add just about anything that you want to into this app bar right here. So if I actually jump in, we'll see here, I'll zoom in so everybody can take a look. Uh, but the uh, Kendo app bar, uh, we see here that we have a couple different things that we can do. So first of all, uh, the theme color we're just inheriting from, from our theme. So if you want to go ahead and maybe customize this a little bit, uh, you can easily do that through configuration options or through CSS. And then we can go ahead and define uh, templates. So, uh, and items is really within with uh, for each item has a template, right? Uh, and uh, the way, the reason that we set this up is essentially the component, as you add in items in here, will try to space things out automatically for you. So the last item will probably end up over on the right-hand side, the first items on the on the left-hand side, and we'll, we'll try to take up as, as much uh, space as makes sense. We even have the ability for you to define your own uh, spacer uh, element as well. So if you want to have a clear space between, so, uh, if, if you don't want these uh, items to line up right and squish right next to each other, you can define a space that allows you to get a little bit more room uh, within the app bar. So um, a lot of configuration options, you can do completely declaratively through, uh, through our configuration options. And then of course, um, you can set up something like an external template like this, or just have a template string uh, right within the uh, item declaration as well, if you like to. And now something that's neat is that you can also define the uh, position if you like to. So uh, for example, right now we have the sticky uh, position. So that means that as I'm scrolling through the content, it is going to kind of remain there up top. Uh, I can also do static, which means that it's always at the top, but as I scroll down, it's, it's uh, gone, right? And uh, I could even define it to be at the top or the bottom. So it automatically takes care of that. And then we can even switch between light and dark modes, depending on the theme that we're working in. Uh, in this particular case, I'll have to double check what is going on here since the text box there is, is, uh, is missing in the dark mode. But in light mode, we'll see that it's, it's all there and available. So all this is just configuration options. So you, you don't even have to mess with any, uh, any customized CSS or anything like that to switch between static and sticky. Uh, super easy to get up and running with. Even the footer, for example, when you scroll here, it will be sticky when it's on the bottom. This, by the way, would, will save me countless of hours of, of manually doing that. 
Uh, now the text area, uh, as I mentioned, a uh, component that now allows you to kind of make things look a little bit more similar to other kind of UI components that you might have. So if I switch, for example, from material to default, uh, we'll see that the demo will uh, load and now the text here will update to fit our default theme a little bit more. And uh, you have the ability to have the counter here at, at the bottom, of course, and you can click it and click and type away. And eventually, uh, maybe if I just copy and paste, right, we'll see that we run into the character limit uh, and we can either allow people to go over if we like to, in this particular case we can, uh, and then do some validation, or we can actually stop users from inputting more, which we can do uh, through uh, configuration option, nice and easy. All right, just looked over at the time here, so I want to make sure I give Alyssa proper time for the Angular uh, piece as well. So uh, the loader component, as we can see here, is uh, uh, allows you to have the constant animation that uh, essentially you can just hide whenever you stop loading a process. And some of the loader types that we have here is pulsing. Uh, we have infinite spinner, which we already covered. Uh, and we also have a converging spinner. And these are uh, just some of the types that we have out of the box. Now, as I mentioned, we also have some additional co configuration options that allow you to tweak these and the look and feel of them. So it's a lot of power in this component uh, beyond just showing a neat little animation as things are loading. All right, so uh, the uh, columns example that we have here in the Gantt charts, moving on to that, we can see, uh, first of all, that I have a column menu here for each individual column. Uh, so that can do things like show and hide columns, for example, filter, sort, uh, and you can add options in here as well. And then as I showcased in the slides, uh, you can also work with templates. So you can very easily define a template by using a template string, uh, just like you would in any of our other uh, tree lists or grid components, for example. Uh, now, I do want to cover the plan versus actual uh, just in a little bit more detail. So as we mentioned in the screenshot, right, we have the prototype item here that is green, and we can see here that it's currently on time, and then that the architecture task is a little bit delayed. Now, uh, something that does pop up, so if I switch between, for example, plan, uh, which we see now what that looks like, and hopefully uh, what we can then also see in actual that we're on the proper time, the planned item is replaced by uh, this bar or this line here at the top, just in order to make sure that we have a nice consistent user experience and not this huge Gantt that just takes over the page just because we went into plan the plan task area. So the plan tasks now become this thin little bar and then we can focus on what is actually happening uh, when we switch over to the actuals view. Now this styling, by the way, you can of course customize if you like to, but that's just out of the box as soon as a task is uh, taken longer than the actual plan or shorter, of course, uh, than the plan. So planned time. means like the task hasn't been started yet, I'm assuming is the difference. No, so so plan just means this is the plan. This is when it was going to start, uh, what's today? Uh, September 30th, right? And it's going to end on October 3rd, let's say that. Uh, and then the actual is, oh, we actually started it uh, on September 30th, but then uh, we finish it on October 2nd, and then that would be oh, okay. um, th that would be kind of where the actual task is. So the plan will be something that pr is probably done uh, pretty far ahead of time when it comes to any sort of project. Okay. Yeah. All right. We took a look at the grid form key column uh, demo already, the source code with the slides, but just to keep in mind that we do have foreign, uh, foreign keys available now. Uh, the sticky column is something that we can see here. Hopefully that comes through okay as I scroll through. We see now that this one column in the middle actually will stick to the right-hand side or the left-hand side, depending on how I'm scrolling. And you can- That is so cool. That out. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love this. Uh, so having that available in the grid uh, just lets you, or even uh, uh, end user through the column menu, for example, uh, could, for example, stick the column here using the, the column menu that we have here for, for the stick or unstick. So there's also some additional configuration you can do ahead of time to predetermine this or uh, allow users to do this on the fly. All right, and last but not least, covering some of the uh, tree view content here, uh, sorry, tree list. It's very similar. Uh, but we can see now that as I'm dragging and dropping uh, this item around, hopefully I'll do it slow so it comes through well. If it, I'm on the current item and or if I have any issues with dropping in a particular area, we'll see that I have that little no symbol. Uh, but then as I uh, move around, we can see that I can either drop it in between two other nodes or I can add it to an existing node. So if I want to, for example, go down and add Hyacinth here under constants, I can do that. And now we see that all of Hyacinth's um, 
subnodes also uh, followed along. So that gives users the ability now to completely reorder data uh, within the tree list. And then of course a lovely checkbox selection where you can now go through and we have a check all col uh, column header option, as well as then of course being able to select or deselect individual rows using just checkbox selection. So I think Alyssa, right on time to give you uh, the, the next portion of the webinar here, but that is pretty much it, what we had yeah. uh, for the for the jQuery uh, section. Now, I know that probably having a lot of questions, I've seen that pop up and we're getting help from our behind the scenes crew. And if we do have any time left over at the end, we'll cover those as well. But with that being said, there I'm gonna one actually wanted to jump talk about before oh, yeah. I hopped into it. Um, David Navarro asked, um, or just really commented on a previous uh, component you were going over that I hope this was added to Angular. And this is something that, um, you know, I hear often or that's like talked about as far as um, what, is there an order that like, for instance, like the teams prefer to release a component first on jQuery and then they'll pass it to Vue and then Angular, like, or is it completely separate and just what the community is sending in feedback for, Carl? Um, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, you know, to, to make the potential long answer a little bit shorter, uh, the idea that we have behind uh, creating all these uh, UI component libraries from the ground up and natively for Angular React at Vue is that they also evolve naturally based on feedback that we have from, from our customers. So it is uh, ultimately up to our community. But in some cases, like for example, with this release, you'll see that some of the components that I covered uh, on the jQuery side are also available on the uh, Angular side as well. So there are some cases where we can line that up where a new component just gets introduced across the board. And that just means that our teams have been able to sit down and, and kind of work together in terms of design, but then implement that, of course, natively for each one of the libraries that we're covering. So, um, so it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with which framework or library you love more. <laughs> no, I love all my children equally. And I, I know some some parents joke about that and say, but some are a little bit more equal, uh, but that's not the case here. Yeah, it's 100% driven by feedback uh, from our community and, and our developers. Cool. cool, cool. All right, Alyssa, I'm going to throw the presenter rights over to you so you can start covering things on your screen. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome to the Angular portion of our show. Um, I was actually on the uh, the React webinar yesterday watching TJ and Carl kill it. And um, I guess it was it was React in view, right? Correct. And yep. uh, I from a, a user perspective, I felt a little lonely because you unlike Twitch or other platforms, you don't you don't see the live chat, you don't see the numbers of people watching. And I was like, am I the only one here? Hello. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted you all to know there's about 275, 280 of you there watching and asking questions or getting lots of questions. So you're not alone. And we are so appreciative of all of you uh, here watching today. Um, so yes, we of course, as we mentioned earlier, are on the Twitters um, with specifically Hey Kendo UI. That hashtag will catch our attention during the live stream, um, but we're also monitoring questions. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of special events and things before I hopped into our updates. Um, I am weekly on Angular podcasts, Angular Air and Adventures in Angular. Um, so if you are wanting to stay up to date on what's happening in the Angular community, uh, definitely check those out. Um, we also have a Code It Live panel, which uh, super, super excited that we'll actually be there 30 minutes after this webinar ends. But every Wednesday, uh, I do UI Wednesdays with Alyssa. That's me. And we cover things like CSS challenges, uh, UI and UX problems that you might be having. And we uh, oftentimes will dive into a code and tackle a challenge live. So check it out. I've learned yes, a lot cool of CSS uh, from, from this, by the way, so it's much appreciated. <laughs> uh, okay, so the last plug, I promise, I promise, is for DevReach. Um, I'm organizing an Angular Relay for DevReach this year. It's virtual, it's free, you should be there. There's gonna be an incredible lineup of people who are all um, like big influencers, and incredible teachers. Um, some of them even work with the Angular team. So uh, check it out, DevReach. Um, it's October 19th through the 23rd. There's gonna be lots of prizes and it's all streamed on Twitch. So definitely, definitely register for that. 
Um, but yes, as you're following along, if you're like, wait, what was that? That thing she said or what was that thing that Carl said so um, this is the specific link for the angular uh, r3 updates but of course um, there's one for each product so if you are specifically interested check it out on to the angulars okay so our as you saw, we have a humongous list of components to get through um, and to talk about. And we also have a ton of new features um, to, to dive into. Um, really, really excited. Uh, so we only have 30 minutes each, Carl and I, during this webinar. And I'm, I've always been a big proponent of, can we have more time, please? Uh, <laughs> so I'm really, really, I, I'll mention it again at the end, but 30 minutes after we end here, um, we'll be doing a deep dive into many of these new components that you see over here on the left. And so today um, it's just kind of a breeze through, ask your questions, we'll, we'll do some Q&A at the end. Um, but uh, the two hour Twitch stream after this is definitely where you're gonna see it in action. Um, so yes, the first one, uh, we're gonna cover the new features on existing components first is uh, the grid now has cell selection. So with R3 2020, the grid now allows you to select um, either single or multiple cells and rows. And there's a whole API in the docs that I highly suggest you check out, um, that you check out that we now have access to. Um, I think I put a picture here. Um, so this is just as you select, it's highlighting it, but I definitely suggest you go check out the demo for this because uh, pictures can only say so much. Yeah, and one but of the cool things, by the way, is you can oh, yeah. drag over an area and it'll select cells in that as well. So if, if you want to just- Nice, so it's not just clicking. Control. Exactly. Mm. Pulling that back up. Okay, very cool. I do we have sticky columns yet? Is that also something we have, oh, or is that we, not a we feature? We have sticky no. columns. We have sticky. We columns. do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I was like, I'm so jealous. jQuery has this. Okay. <laughs> um, the next two new features are all for charts. Um, the first one is plot band labels. And I know it's kind of longer, but sometimes I get confused. Uh, and I'm like, if I'm getting confused, I know some of the users might get confused on where things are nestled under the docs. And so this link um, that I have on every single slide is for exactly where in the docs, you can go check it out right now. So this will be underneath charts, elements, plot bands. Um, but this is what the label looks like and symbol did a nice little zoom in action there for you. Uh, <laughs> and so yes, you can add plot labels to your plot bands and configure the displays, how it's displaying. And this is just an example of how you could do that um, with the markup for the plot band and then also the label inside of your TypeScript where you're giving it text, font color, um, the color and the margin and there's there's a bunch more so definitely check out the, the the docs but the next thing we added legend titles for our charts uh, i'm picking up some other mic i don't know who it is it might oh, be. Yeah. i i got that oh, covered in the interface <laughs> you're good to go no, oh, thank you. Um, so yes, the legend titles. Um, developers can now give some a little bit of extra context, um, and it sounds super simple. Um, but here is how you define that now. It's kind of the same way. You're binding title to something in your TypeScript, and then you're giving it the text that it's going to say, the font, and it comes out like this with um, over on the side where the countries are listed. Um, yeah, legends. Legend title so in right now. I know it's it's a small thing, but it really does help with extra context. And I think oftentimes with charts, there's just a lot of data <laughs> being thrown at a user. And so anything that can kind of streamline. Um, so yeah, it's a new yeah, feature. And these, both of these are uh, quality of life improvements for sure from a developer perspective. You could have done this with some custom code before, but now it's just configuration options, which that's always my favorite to be able to say. It's nothing custom, just a quick configuration option. No, I and any time that you don't have to go outside of um, 
the framework or the library that you're working in anytime it's it's just handy especially yeah. for future compatibility and keeping things up to date so yeah definitely love it um okay the next two features for features so the first one um is form guide compliance which we mentioned in the last quarterly update that we had released a form guide which can help it helps outline best practices when you're using kendo ui for angular forms um, and so this release we've updated many of our form components uh, to bring them up to compliance with our form guide so that is just kind of a behind the scenes freebie um, and then another <laughs> Another behind the scenes update uh, that I was excited about, I wanted to mention is the reduced bundle sizes. And I think I have, yes, I have a slide for that. Um, so we've been able to reduce the overall bundle size that's generated when using some of our biggest components like the grid or the tree list or the chart, um, and there's others. But basically we've minimized the Angular drawing uh, the Excel export pack and Excel export packages. And so these packages are what power many of the data visualizations, things, um, many of our components that use those. And so because of our the updated tree shaking support, we can now see an average of like 15%, I think, across many packages, but some are seeing up to 26%. So super exciting that we should mention it. Um, and I think that covers all of the new features. We're ready to dive into new components. And um, double checking the. Uh, <laughs> thanks, David. He said legend titles. The legend title update is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And then I'll let everyone else. There's another question, but it looks a bit longer. So I'm going to dive into icons and let the uh, the crew handle that. So. Icon and SVG icon components underneath components slash icons now. Um, let's go into, so yes, these are used for either a font icon or an SVG icon, um, which both look the same, but have different uh, use cases. And so the uh, icon, the difference between using them um, from what I can see is obviously the name so kendo icon or kendo svg icon but also binding um the name versus the icon um but i think the names are the same so i think on ah yes for any new components in my slides another thing that i wanted to add was the um the ng add command to get that in there so um both of these icons are covered underneath the icon ng add command so the sizes, there's a ton of different sizes, and this is just a chart from the docs with the associated uh, width, height, and font size to those sizes. Um, but then this link is super important because underneath our styling in our docs, it talks about um, basically the entire breadth of our icon library, and both of those should be available for whether you're using a font icon or an SVG icon. Um, so if you need to peruse, you're hunting for a certain icon, those names can be found there. Yeah, and there's um, like 400 or something like that, so you have quite a lot of yeah. icons to, to go through. Yes. Uh, and then I wanted to mention this as well, um, just the customizability, if that's a word, <laughs> of uh, the icons word. with, yeah, we're saying, we're saying it is, so there you go. Um, that with, as far as size, color, flip, all of these things, um, just pass it in and it, it happens, it works. And this is one of the things that I actually, oh, I'm so excited, I try not to like spoilers, but I have an incredible demo after this um, of, I, I don't know if many of you are familiar with John Papa's Tour of Heroes app, but I took the tours of hero, the Tour of Heroes app and I added in Kendo UI and I may have changed all the heroes to my little pony characters. So you're welcome. Um, but we're gonna be diving into that application um, and things like the icon and uh, other components that I shall not spoil. Uh, so yes, please, please join us on the Twitch, the Twitches later. Um, so we have two, not one, but two new indicator components um, with the ng add command you see below. Uh, and the first one is badge. 
the second one is the loader. So yeah, if you were watching and you were super jealous of the jQuery loader, now you can be like, hey, we have a loader and a badge. So haha. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> we love everyone equally. <laughs> um, so our loader is actually really, really cool. Um, so is the badge. And I actually I had so much fun pulling both of these into that application that I was just talking about. And um, for instance, uh, making my data really, really slow so that I could see the loader. And I saw a question earlier about, and Carl, maybe you can talk about this with the loader as far as can you pass it an SVG? Um, I know at least for the Angular loader, you have these three options with um, the like three styles, and then you can customize those specific styles. But I, to my knowledge, I don't think you can pass in a custom SVG for the loader, correct? Yeah, not not at this point in time. If that is something that folks uh, want to see in a future version of it, uh, definitely let us know and uh, by submitting you know feedback in in our public feedback portal. But from this initial release, uh, we essentially have a couple of predefined styles, and then you can do some, you know, customization of those. But uh, we'll see yeah. uh, where where we can take this. You know, more styles, and of course, the, maybe the ability to pass in custom SVG could be neat. I like okay. this already. Oh, already, I'm getting ideas of of how we can improve things uh, uh, for Vnext. <laughs> you know, it's perfect. Uh, so the badge, I was. When I first saw it and I added it in, add, NG added the indicators, slapped in the badge, and I was like, okay, what do I do? And then I pulled up the docs, which I'm going to actually take a break from our slides right now and pull those up because I was really uh, kind of blown away by, uh, and I think you should see me, me docs. Yeah, I think everybody, mm -hmm. I'm going to, yeah, we've seen the docs now. A bit, a bit larger. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I was a bit blown away by the customizability. So we have a way to have themes throughout. And so you can easily, by specifying the theme color, change the badge color. But not only that, um, you can change the badge shape, which I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I had so much fun playing around with this. Um, the size, which similar to the icons, has like an associated uh, like width, height, and I think font size changes as well. And then the fill, whether you want solid or outline, and you're like, okay, at this point, you're like, wow, this, this badge can do everything. No, hold on, just hold on. <laughs> um, the cutout, I love the cutout. You can specify if you want a cutout border or not, which I will zoom in with my, maybe not. There we go. Uh, can you see this zoom or is that only... I think it might be only on, on your side. Only on my end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a cutout and it's kind of like an out, uh, an outline that's added to your badge, but it looks really super sharp. Um, and I was actually, uh, during playing around with my demo, I was a little worried about like positioning of the badge. Like, is the badge going to need to be knee or inside of something? And so if you actually in the docs head on over to the badge container, um, this saved my bacon <laughs> for, cause I wanted it in a very custom spot. And so you can, um, I actually think I put this in the slides. Yes. The badge can be nested, um, relatively positioned to elements. Um, and if the target element cannot host the content, which mine couldn't, um, you can add a badge container, which is supported. So it's really, really neat. Um, super impressed with this small, but very finished new component. So check it out. Um, and that is the first indicator, the second indicator, um, spoilers, loader. Um, so yes, it's just a visual indicator that informs user that there's an ongoing process, right? Like this data is still loading. We're still transferring you to the next stage, whatever, whatever the thing is, uh, we're still submitting this form and, um, I'm going to pop back over, pop, 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 pop. Oh, sorry. I jumped us around. Here we go. This one. And let's close this. So the loader, good. Our font is still massive. That's what we need. Um, has these three types. The pulsing is default, infinite spinner, and converging spinner. But just as with our other indicator, the badge, um, you can specify the theme color uh, super, super easily. <laughs> and the size, small, medium, large. Uh, and then there is, of course, um, 
there's other details in the docs, which really helped me, uh, especially this integration doc about, because there's a couple of different like use cases, like where you want to put the loader. And this one is a demo of it being on a button. So I'd imagine this is like, oh, I'm trying to submit this form. It's thinking, it's thinking, and then it's submitted, like, and it goes back to normal. But the main thing that my brain went to was it filling out an entire component. So for instance, what I added it to was our list view, which is new. Um, so that whenever the data was taking a while to load into our list view, I wanted the loader to appear. Um, and so these docs here with this example uh, was a big help on figuring out um, how you would do that. But it's actually, uh, it's as simple as you would you would think. It's just a, an ng if type situation where you're checking if the data is still loaded. Um, so down here, we have this loading panel visible, right, that we're setting our text with, um, as well as the loading panel visible, true, false. So uh, yeah, definitely, I'm going to go back over to our slides, checking time, I need to boogie. <laughs> uh, we have about nine minutes or gonna... so, but, uh, you know, okay. and we also do yeah, have I the, leave uh, a little... the, the Twitch stream for any additional deep dive, right. so. Uh, you know, right. we can cover everything we have here. And then for those of you that can join us, we'll dive even deeper at that point. Um, so I know that it was asked that I share the link to the deep dive demo here. Um, I'm Alyssa Michelle on GitHub. Um, so you can definitely hunt it down. It is Kendo UI Tour of Heroes. But also if we could share just in the chat at some point during our stream, the twitch.tv slash code it live, because that's uh, where we're going to be diving into it. And I'll be sharing that and other resources as well. So um, yeah. the text box is our next one. And I was a little confused by this when I saw this. Um, because I was like, do we not have a text box? Did we have, <laughs> I think maybe I was thinking of text area, perhaps. I, I don't remember because whenever I first saw this, I was like, wait, I could have swore we had a text box, but beyond ensuring a consistent look and feel, of course, for all of our form elements, a text box can add elements and adornments. So I don't have time right now, but in the deep dive, um, I show off actually how you use adornments and um, this text box, for instance, um, that you're seeing in the GIF here, it's not a simple text box with placeholder. It has things that are surrounding it, icons and buttons, um, and those are configurable with adornments. So, um, Yes, it also provides built-in validation icons. Um, so if something's required and they erase it, uh, you can get like the X or the green check, check mark, and that's just built in by default. Um, and it's actually something, if you want to, that you can toggle off. Uh, the range slider, yes. So uh, we're covering even more scenarios uh, now with this range slider than we were with our previous slider component. It lets users select a range of value by dragging two separate indicators to represent the floor and the ceiling um, of a particular range. And it, it looks gorgeous. So yes. Carl, is there anything you want to add on range slider? I don't think I had... No, uh, you, you know it's uh, it's a it's a sleek component, but it does what the name says. It gives you a uh, a slider that allows you to select a range, right, a start and, and an end. But there's a ton of configuration options into that, right? But that's that's the the main gist of the component is is that that kind of behavior. Yeah, and let's see. Of course, it is underneath. If you're hunting for it in the docs, it is underneath components and then underneath inputs. <laughs> ba -ba -ba breadcrumb. I was excited about this one. It was fun. The breadcrumb, the breadcrumb component. Most of you are probably familiar with what a breadcrumb is, but it allows you to navigate um, within like the structure of your web page, so that you can easily navigate backwards or even all the way to home. And it looks like this. And so I, I love the breadcrumb. Super, super simple, but at the same time can be painful <laughs> to implement by yourself. So I love it. Um, so yes, I think the breadcrumb would fit perfectly in our new app bar. Don't worry, mm -hmm. jQuery is not the only one to get the app bar love. <laughs> and uh, as we saw, I know Carl covered the app bar in more details in his demo, but it provides 
it's basically a wrapper for either a header or footer, right? It's to show page titles, brand identity. You can put the breadcrumb in there, navigation items, um, what, whatever you will. So yes. Yeah, and um, while I don't recommend it, uh, while we were playing around with the React version of this yesterday, we put a full Gantt component into the app bar. <laughs> I know. I didn't uh, mean for it to go that far, Carl. Yeah, I it asked a question. That, yeah, was, said, that was your said, question. Yeah. Put any component in there, and TJ was like, "Let's stick a Gantt chart in there," and I was like, "Yeah." Oh, no. So you could <laughs> technically do that here as well. Uh, morally, I don't think that you should, but uh, you know, you still can. I love when I love when you have moral quandaries with like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it's it. It's just like okay, putting a see. tree view in a in a cell in the grid. You probably shouldn't. Oh, uh, you should look right, into the grid. Right, right. Like, is this you something can, you should be doing? <laughs> but yeah, your users won't like it. Mm. Uh, someone said, "Help me go to Twitch." So we 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 shall share the link, and I have yes. it. Yes, uh, I posted in the it in the chat uh, for everybody, oh, and thank we've you. Been addressing questions that they've popped up as well. So everybody shouldn't have that link available for those of you that can join us there. Then it's going to be me. It's going to be Carl. It's going to be a fun time. All right, you just got to show up. You just got. <laughs> uh, I think this might be the last one. I don't know. I think it might be the list view component. Uh, she's not nested. She's just under component slash list view. And it is a way to visualize repeated data content in <laughs> a list, right? But get this. This is what I spend, I spent like the most time on. I know it's such a silly, like, really? You spent hours on the list? Yes. I spent hours like customizing, tweaking. There's so much um, that you can do with the list of you. Um, and it looks simple, but just things like paging or adding in our new text box component to have a search that filters through the list while still having paging, right? These things are like not easy to implement. They look like if you do it correctly, they look simple, but it's it's just actually really beautiful. This this is my favorite. This is the the cherry on top of the beautiful R3 cake. Um, so please, please join us. I will, I will show you the ways of the list view. <laughs> yeah. And something As to keep Carl, in mind too, by the oh, way, yeah. is that you were showing off just a list, like a traditional, you know, takes up the full width, but you can have templates like cards, for example, using a card component and do something, I guess, yeah. like uh, Etsy or Pinterest, right? Those are the top two that come to mind or eBay used to do this as well. Uh, but you essentially have these cards mm -hmm. you can just scroll through and then doing endless scrolling on top of that. Uh, that's when things start getting kind of complicated pretty quickly and adding keyboard navigation or anything like that, right? So, um, and that's one thing that yeah. I, because I started off with, I have a ton of data. Let's just get it in the list view. And then I will walk you through that um, in, on Twitch, but I'll also show you how I was like, I want this super custom card component to iterate through our list view and just how easy it was to do. It really, really was. So come check it out. Um, I love it. Uh, feedback. So Carl and I were talking about this earlier, um, and I've seen it firsthand working here now for, I think, maybe two years. I have to double check, but I've actually witnessed feedback from the community come in, affect what the dev team does, and get released. And so please, please, please send us your feedback for uh, feature requests, component requests, um, bugs that you find, what, whatever. Uh, we, we want to hear. We do. Um, and I say this every time, but I mean it, I really do. I know you have many options to choose from for component libraries with Angular. So thanks for choosing Kendo UI. We, uh, we all appreciate you very much. Um, yes. So this is the, the reminder and the URL in disgusting purple, pink and white, uh, twitch.tv slash code it live. So this is where I'm taking the tour of heroes adding in my little ponies and kendo ui and it's like a combination that like what could go wrong right it's perfect <laughs> um, so yeah join us there it's gonna be a blast i think that is all i have for you and i think we are one minute out so carl is there like a quick question we could answer at the speed of light <laughs> well i i do uh so we've actually been uh been answering a lot of questions in in the back here so anybody that has a asked a question so far has an answer and I am going to just quickly do some housekeeping items. So we probably won't be able to do a, a live answer here, unfortunately, but just okay. to make sure that- You want me to make you the presenter? Should, can uh, you have I'm, any slides I'm about for that? to steal it from you. Uh, and I'm sorry do it. that I, I did that, but <laughs> here we go. We should see my slides popping up again. Perfect. So 
Uh, as I mentioned, right, just some some more housekeeping items here. Right at the end, uh, we of course appreciate you sticking out for for the entire hour here. But um, you know, any and everything that we've covered uh, today, you can find on telerik.com slash kendo UI, and then you can navigate to the jQuery components, the Angular components, and of course, if you're interested, uh, the React and Vue components, which you just didn't cover today. And everything that we covered today is also available on the blog. So Alyssa mentioned a specific blog posts for Angular, but uh, we dove into this uh, and you'll see a lot of blog posts from me, from Alyssa, from everybody on the team at telerik.com slash blogs. And you can even click on, for example, the Angular tag just to get Angular content or the jQuery tag just to see our, our jQuery content there as well. Uh, now, uh, I did have this last slide for Q&A, but since we are right up on time, uh, we will kind of leave things as they are now. And thanks to our awesome helpers, uh, we've been able to answer uh, all the questions that have popped through so far, I believe. Um, now, if there are any that we missed, we'll, of course, follow up uh, if we can and, and reach out to you with, the, with any answers that we might have. And, of course, for those of you that might be joining us in half an hour on Twitch, uh, you can even feel free to try to repost your question there, and we'll be able to help out. Uh, live. So that will be Alyssa and myself uh, taking care of you there for, for a little bit. Uh, but since we are right up on, on the hour here, maybe even a minute over, I just want to say thank you, everybody, uh, for joining today. And hopefully all the new R3 2020 bits are so, something that you can already start playing around with and integrate into your applications. And we will see you with the next release. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>